I am here to show you the most powerful weapons from each class. But I'm talking every single category, including bows, shields, ballistas, everything. Alrighty then, let's jump right into it. Katanas. Moonveil? Nah, nah, nah. Cold infused Nagakiba with spinning slash. All day, baby, all day. Daggers. Got the badass black knife. Got the Reduvia with its boss melting weapon art. But which dagger is the most useful, most versatile, most effective on a wide variety of builds? The Misery Cord, of course. The longest reaching dagger, a smooth, steely style with the highest critical strike. This makes it viable to use on all types of builds as a punisher after guard breaking. You'll be shoving the Misery Cord into enemies like there's a little boy shoving a sandwich into this poor lady's mouth. Tragic. Great axes. I would like to choose the Barnacle of Death, the Rusted Anchor, but check this out. Have you heard of an older gentleman named the Executioner's Great Axe? An underrated strength weapon, mostly known for its uniquely high critical strike bonus. It's only 115, so nothing too crazy, but it's just enough to make it worth using. Throw on Crag Blade for extra bonking powers, Stone Bar Tear to break stance even easier, and Dagger Talisman to deal even more damage on critical strike strikes. Curved Swords. Now if you know me, then this is an obvious choice. You already know where I'm going with Magma Blade, baby! Let's go! Yes sir, the Magma Blade has a master's degree in melting booty. Stone booty, horse booty, hairy booty, stanky booty. No booty is safe from the Magma Blade. The weapon art is literally just the spinning slash, which is already a very strong move, but it's ten times better because of the magma being thrown. Hammers. I'm going for the hammer with the longest reach, the ringed finger. This thing reminds me of Hot Dog Mondays back in county jail. Colossal Swords. If you are a Swagosaurus Rex, you'll probably opt for the God Slayer's Greatsword, which is great for slaying gods with its deadly black flame. Slow to perform, but it hits like a truck. Though if you are a Chadosaurus Rex, you'll probably prefer the Greatsword. Yes sir, this thing is too damn big to be considered a sword. It's more of just a giant hunk of f***ing metal that you swing around like a madman and hope for the best. If you're looking like this, you are not wielding this weapon. The Greatsword is on the top of every single list because of its versatility. Extremely powerful using all types of different Ashes of War and different affinities. Blood, frost, fire, this thing is a menace to society in all elements. One of the greatest honors in life is to be bonked to death by the Greatsword. Curved Great Swords. Bloodhound Fang would be the obvious choice here, though recently my eyes have been opened to the Magma Worm Scale Sword. This very hairy monstrosity can melt through larger enemies with ease. Its weapon art is nearly impossible to interrupt. Once you get going, your load of magma shall not be stopped. One problem is its length. Though its moveset is quite fast, it has a very short reach. So, Bloodhound Fang is probably objectively best, but the Magma Scale Sword definitely deserves that shout out. Especially considering, in my opinion, it is extremely fun. It's just fun, man, and enjoyable to use. Twin Blades. For straight power and damage potential, the Gargoyle Twin Blade is actually the strongest, but it does not take the stage today. No sir, the Eleonora's Pole Blade takes this spot. Its style points puts it in the lead. Everyone talks about its riveting weapon art, and for good reason, it can be very fun and effective. But people forget to mention its unique heavy. I mean, geez, look at that, man. That's that's the real spinny spin attack right there. Daddy, watch me twirl. Daddy! This unique heavy goes hard in the paint, bro. Pause, hold up, no, I was wrong, I was wrong. This heavy attack is doo-doo hot trash. It feels like you're doing more twirlies than you are actually attacking. Regardless, enemies that can stagger and are vulnerable to blood loss will get smacked around by this blood flame twin blade. Straight Swords. I really wanted to choose the Coded Sword, aka the Jesus Lightsaber. On the right build, this sword becomes a monster. But then I really thought about the potential the Sword of Night and Flame has on a higher level build. This is the ultimate weapon for a New Game Plus high level character. Perfectly suitable to use for the upcoming DLC. In four months from now, wide range for Weenie Hut Juniors and pinpointed targeted damage for single enemies. I mean, 
shit. You could dual wield it with the coated sword, giving you access to fire, magic, and holy damage. Even after the nerf, the Sword of Night and Flame retains its position as a true legendary armament. Alright, now we're moving on to the shields. I will be ranking this based on strongest offensive power, you know, like as if you were using it like a weapon. For the small shields, we have the Coil Shield with its Viper Bite weapon art. You give the shield a little shake, a, li a little wake up slap, which brings this Viper to life, inciting it to lash out and bite your enemies, inflicting deadly poison. Now, deadly poison is like regular poison's war veteran grandfather. You don't yeah, I know, I've used that joke before, but hey, it's a good joke, alright? It's a good joke. The coil shield is pretty shit for defensive purposes, but it gets the job done, and can be used to create some unique and fun builds. For the great shields, we have a few options here. The Ur Tree Great Shield, with its uniquely chad-tastic weapon art. The Spiked Palisade Shield, which is great for status effects because it comes with innate bleed. Obviously, I mean, this is like a medieval torture chamber. God damn, look at that face, bro. Look at that face. But it can also be infused with different affinities, such as frost or poison. So on its own, it is capable of proccing both blood loss and poison together, which can create some gnarly builds. And then finally we got the handsome one-eyed shield. Dude, I've used this one-eyed shield in builds before, and it's actually viable. It is. Blasting out a goddamn tank cannon from a decent distance away, dealing up to 2-3k damage per blast. If I had to pick one, I'd say the one-eyed shield is best, but all three of these shields are worth using. Heavy Thrusting Swords, the infamous diabolical dildo itself, the Bloody Hellas. Anything that can bleed and stagger is done for, straight donezo. Once you start stabbing and schmoving around, it's over. You are quite easily dealing up to 55 stance damage and proccing bleed. I mean, think about it, think about it. A ton of powerful weapon arts force you to charge it up, leaving you vulnerable for a second or two, and you gotta tank through attacks or you get slapped out of it. Meanwhile. Bloody Hellas is the opposite. Instead of leaving you vulnerable, you can use it to evade attacks. It allows you to dodge, then perform that heavy forward thrust. Which, by the way, you can follow up with another R2 heavy attack for a sweeping slice. Plus, one of the most important aspects is it's fun. In my opinion, moving around the combat field like a sneaky vampire Michael Jackson is very, very enjoyable. Spears. I don't want to do it. I don't I don't want to, but I got to do it. The Bolt of Grand Sacks. This is like the popular guy at school, the handsome, funny high school quarterback who acts nice in front of some people, but then turns around and takes your lunch money and disrespects you in front of your girlfriend that makes you feel like a loser. <clears throat> it is 100% lightning type and scales directly with your dexterity level, so it's very easily buffed to a lethal stature. Even ignoring its weapon art, this is viable simply used as a spear on a dexterity build. This is another easy mode weapon. The Great Swords. There are so many Great Swords that I gotta hit y'all with one somber type and one non-somber type Great Sword. For non-somber infusible, I choose the Flam Burge. It's similar in strength to many other great swords, but the Flam Burge comes with a sexy style plus innate blood loss. Enhancing with blood flame and using the blood tax ash of war? Sheesh, bro, you be taking souls. Then for a somber type great sword, you can debate all day about whether the Blasphemous Blade or Dark Moon Great Sword is best. Divine Frosty Glow or Disgusting Wiggly Hands. I mean, at first, I thought the Blasphemous Blade's healing factor was just insanely broken. Like, the perfect weapon for the average player to use for not only exploring and traversing the lands, but also in boss fights. But if you think about it, only the weapon art heals you, which means all you're really doing is trading your FP for your health. You have to use more FP flask instead of using your HP flask. You're just trading. On the other hand, the Dark Moon Greatsword weapon art doesn't even use FP. FP once you get it going, dealing frost and breaking stance. Dude, there is nothing I love more than clapping some frosty cheekies with the Moonlight Sword. So in the end, Dark Moon takes the lead with practicality and style points.
colossal weapons. Though the giant crusher is the obvious choice here, though it is the epitome of Oonga Boonga, and despite it having the highest attack power in the game, I am still choosing a different colossal weapon. Yes sir, you see, there is another more sinister weapon here that deserves the spotlight. The almighty pizza cutter. See, most people are too mesmerized by the weapon art to see the true potential that hides within this weapon's heavy attacks. The weapon art does not activate successive attack buffs, but the spinning from the heavy attacks will indeed activate successive hit buffs. This is a game changer for this weapon, man. Blood exaltation for blood loss, axe talisman to buff the heavy charged attacks, yep, turns into one viable and mean build. It's also got omega style points. That is nightmare fuel right there. Reapers. Of course, I gotta go with the Grave Scythe. You can farm two of these quite easily, so power stancing them is a must. It feels great procking status effects using Double Scythe with its deadly jump attacks. Grave Scythe got the highest attack power and looks the coolest. Whips. First off, I gotta say it, when it comes to whips, you must dual wield them. It is a federal law to power stance whips. If you break this law, Miyazaki himself will show up on your front door and proceed to traumatize you. Stupid bitch. So I could sit here and say, the Hoslow's whip has the most versatility with the highest damage potential. But nah, 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 y'all know I got more sauce than that, baby boy. So instead, I choose the giant's red pubic hair. What did he say? Giant's Red Braid has the longest range of all whips, and the weapon art can be very fun and effective. It's high risk, high reward. If you land it, you can stun lock enemies, burn them up, and slap them around. But if you don't time it correctly, you're sitting there flinging around the whip looking like a doofus, wasting precious FP and stamina. Ballistas. Looking at the number of ballistas, you can see this was a very hard decision to make. I mean, after hours of debating and contemplating, I finally chose the Jar Cannon. Experimental firearm brought to the assault on Volcano Manor, where it was discovered that no one knew how to use it. What the f- what, what you got, an army full of boneheads, man? What's going on here? Well, using the right buffs, you can get some serious damage. Parry this, you filthy scrub! Fist Weapons. With its unique heavy moveset, the spiked Kestis is a great choice, especially if you want to roleplay as Mike Tyson. I may like Fonny King more than other people, it's just who I am. It comes with innate blood loss, although there's another more powerful fist weapon that also has blood loss, the Star Fist. <laughs> I always talk about the Star Fist because it's the real deal. It deserves all the hype. It can do quick, successive attacks, procking blood loss, or heavy hitting charged attacks for the hard, spiky bunk. The Star Fist can do both very effectively. Most certainly, the strongest fist weapon. Thrusting Swords. It doesn't have Scarlet Rot buildup like the Ansper Rapier, but I do believe the Ragier's Rapier fills the role of a Thrusting Sword the very best. We all know its sneaky unique heavy attack. On guard, bitch, on guard. The Ragier's Rapier Unique Heavy is one of the strongest tactics in the game for breaking stance. Plus, it has an extra 110 critical strike bonus. Glint Blade Phalanx plus Unique Heavy Attack equals... Oh, he dead. He, he definitely dead. Throw on Cold Affinity for procking Frost, and it is absolutely perfect as a melee weapon for a spellcasting mage. Flails. Now, when it comes to flails, the bastard star seems to have a lot of potential. Oh, shiny. But the reality is, only one, maybe two of these galactic blasts actually make contact with your target, regardless of its size. So I really don't feel like it's as great as some people claim it to be. Therefore, I'm going with the Knight Rider Flail. You see, Chain Link Flail and Knight Rider are virtually the same when it comes to attack power and its reach. But ultimately, I choose the Knight Rider because of that sleek edgelord style. It has innate blood loss, so you can use cold affinity to proc frost and bleed, creating that deadly double whammy. By the way, please, please do not two-hand a flail. Either power stance or just wield it like this, man. Please don't do it to yourself. Look at the way you two-hand this. Look at this dude. My leg! 
like light bows. Now see, none of the light bows are extraordinarily powerful. So my choice is the harp bow. As you fling out arrows, sending enemies to the depths of hell, this bow plays harmonious, graceful music while doing it. Harp bow plus sleep arrows equals lethal lullaby. Once you get the little baby schnozen, you whip out a big ass bonker and, and molly whop him right in the face. Medium bows. Most would assume the black bow because of its speed is the greatest bow. And yeah, it probably is, but today I put forth a new way of thinking. So the main reason that bows can be effective is by using passive effects, like bleed, frost, or poison. Well, one of the best bows to inflict blood loss or poison is actually the serpent bow. This bad boy scales with your arcane, which increases status buildup. So with a very high arcane level, you pop off one or two serpent arrows and you easily proc that poison. Great bows. Technically, the golem great bow is the strongest, but the lion's great bow, this got the strong weapon art, the double buff to Radon arrows, it's got the dope style, man, it's got everything you need, my boy. Great spears. Out of these six great spears, at least half of them are on steroids. The amount of both drippy style and straight deadliness emanating from this entire weapon class is just spectacular. That being said, I must refer to both the Siluria's tree and Mogwin's great spear. So, the Mogwin's sacred spear, screaming knee heal, knee heal while using this weapon, is a moral obligation, a, a responsibility we all have to from software. So you better be doing it. This weapon is a big reason why some people claim blood loss equals easy mode. Because not only does its weapon art literally rain down fiery death upon every enemy around you, but its trifecta of poking booty is great for regular attacks also, with the longest reach of all great spears. On top of all that, its blood flame and cosmetic detail gives it an awesomely vicious appearance. Style points for sure. Although, one big problem with this weapon art is how slow it is, and how it doesn't have great range. Meanwhile, Saluria's tree does not have that problem. You blast your giant divine laser railgun from a very far distance, and doesn't even take that long to fully charge up. It's fairly quick considering how powerful it is. Even the swift, uncharged version still hits like a truck. Ultimately, both of these weapons can plow through the entire game easily. Let me know which great spear you think is best down in the comment section. Great hammers. Gotta go with my good friend, the great stars. High damage, innate blood loss, and heals you 1% per hit. You can obtain two of these in a single playthrough, so dual wielding is a must. Get the double crack blade hammer slammer, go bonkers on your enemies, and reap the benefits. If you're trying to become a real Chad, use these hammers. You know what else can make you a Chad? Joining up in our Elden Ring Gaming Discord. Here you can meet new people, partake in live events and giveaways, plus become a true king by joining the VIP section for a ton of special perks. All gamers are invited. You can find a link to the Discord down below. Next up is Halberds. This one is also pretty obvious. I mean, everyone knows where I'm going with Knight Rider Glaive, baby. The big black daddy of Elden Ring. The Knight Rider Glaive specializes in making this game easy for you. Crossbows. The only crossbow that is not totally, utterly useless is the pulley crossbow. The triple pew pew can proc status effects quite well. Did you know you can use crossbows with a shield? Perfect opportunity for a legit tank build. Look at that face, man. <laughs> For the axes, I'm going with my little buddy, the Iron Cleaver. Unique R2 heavy attack. You charge it up and slam it down, bringing the end to all the dreams and aspirations the enemy just had. Not only does it have a powerful bunks, but has a savage R1 light spam moveset. You got the best of both worlds, man. One of the strongest heavy charged attacks, plus one of the best light spam attacks. And like my piece of shit ninth grade math teacher would say, Say, that's a double trouble mate claws. Venomous Fang. I've talked about this weapon many times before. It's got a wicked, slithery style. But most importantly, it comes straight out the factory stacked with deadly poison. Combining this with blood loss allows you to create some incredibly deadly builds. Stacking successive attack buffs, Lord of Blood Exultation, Rot Exultation, the combination of bleed and poison is lethal. Especially on a claw moveset that can strike so quickly 
quickly. And now it's your turn. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. I thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.